Real Faith and Reason Journey, Volume 1 Absolute Proof of the Bible and the God of the Bible by Petrus B. Scientia Trip 1. My Journey As a young child, I remember asking my father, How can we know that we're right and everyone else is wrong? I continued seeking God regarding my lifelong question, How can we know truth? In my late teens, my pastor gave a sermon on the Holy Spirit. He was teaching from the Bible, but God seemed so real to me as I listened. I couldn't imagine how that would be. But my pastor said that all the power of the God who created the universe is available now. We could somehow know God personally, and he could lead us into righteousness. During the week, I was thinking about that. I was open to God and pondering what my pastor said. That's when my life changed. I had always been a serious Christian, doing the best I could. I firmly believed that Jesus Christ died for my sins and that he forgave my sins. I sensed his forgiveness for my shortcomings. I read a chapter a day in the Bible, just like they told me to. But I didn't understand it, and it was pretty dry reading. I tried to live a moral life. I prayed. All those years of Bible study and prayer may have prepared me for what happened next. The experience is difficult to describe. I was suddenly free in a way I had never been free. It was like the phrase Christ in me suddenly became a real experience. I was alive in Christ. As I write these words, they fail to describe what began in a moment of belief and wonder. From that day, scripture opened up to me. The Bible became supremely interesting to me and made perfect sense without rationalizations. God started teaching me about love. Then he taught me about his design for the church. He spoke to me through scripture, the created world, and through various Christians I knew. However, I wasn't free from the fallen human mind's ability to rationalize erroneous interpretations of scripture, as I was to find out in the years following. I knew that God was teaching me, but I heard so many ideas that I became confused. There was a dynamic preacher on the radio who had a word from God that would bless me in every way. He had a revelation, but he couldn't tell me that day. I had to tune in the next day. He kept building the suspense, and he was going to let it out, but at the right time. Finally, after about a week, he revealed what God had spoken to him. If I sent him $10, God would give me 100 If I sent him $100, God would give me 1000 I instantly knew that this was a lie. I knew it intuitively. But I wasn't certain of anything. I looked at all the denominations. Every one of them could convincingly present their version of the truth. They all followed the Bible and could give biblical reasons for what they believed. Some teachings rang false, but others seemed 
true. I met a preacher who told me to come to his church because he was both a prophet and an apostle. A neighbor offered to pay for me to go to seminary in their denomination. Some churches had great music, others had great speakers. Some claimed that they had all the truth and that those who wouldn't follow their interpretations were twisting scripture. Others went further to the point of using fear of hell to get me to believe their doctrines. I heard many conflicting and confusing end times theologies and origins theologies. There were theologies about the Godhead, morality, baptisms, and every other aspect of life, and they all promoted conflicting interpretations of Scripture. However, after all my searching, my question remained, how can we know the truth? God began answering me decades later by speaking to me about my thinking and pointing out how inadequate that thinking was without revelation from the Holy Spirit. He didn't show me everything at once. The process was slow. He spoke to me through scripture and through many of the means of revelation that God mentions in scripture. God spoke to me by bringing to my mind the teaching I had received from godly Christian teachers and confirming that teaching through experience and scripture. It was by divine revelation that God imparted a supernatural certainty that the Bible is true and without error and that no personal revelation will ever conflict with the Bible. He showed me that the moral law still holds but is now activated, and God makes true righteousness possible through grace. At the same time, he demonstrated that he is certain to correct my misinterpretations of the Bible, even though I might resist him for a while. That process is ongoing. God was exposing the biggest lie and the most amazing truth. But the truth seemed too simple. And it seemed to me that no one would fall for such a lie. And yet, the entire world believed the conclusions that were springing from it. God appeared to be showing me that the unanointed human mind builds reasoning on making up stuff. And then it tries to give the appearance that the made up stuff is true. Could it be that we base most of our thinking on made up stuff? If so, our thoughts are pure vapor. And yet, no one was talking about that. I wondered, wouldn't everyone be talking about that? God also showed me the simplicity that's in Christ. Christ isn't a theory, theology, or concept. Christ is a person. He's real. Whoever seeks him, finds him. Moment by moment, he leads, teaches, corrects, and purifies every person who follows him. Faith comes by hearing him, and whatever he says is the truth. Sound reason requires truth as a starting point for thinking, and every thought that opposes Christ has a foundation of made-up stuff. Of course, I had many questions in my mind, 
Could it be that we can only find truth in Christ Jesus? If so, what does this do to theology, philosophy, and science? How does this affect the argument between presuppositional apologists and evidential apologists? What about logic, critical thinking, and decision-making? It seemed that if God doesn't supply the truth through some form of divine revelation, rational thought would be impossible. Without that truth, humans could only react to their natural senses as animals do. They could learn about how to react to those senses, but they couldn't reason beyond what they could observe and test. And I noted that science that leads to technology is limited to what we can observe and test. If all of that is true, then all human reason that goes beyond what can be observed or what God has revealed would be irrational and unsound. Over the last two decades, I gained confidence through hundreds of conversations and experiences that what God had revealed is true. Through the internet, God exposed me to the many intense arguments of Christians struggling with various aspects of this same truth. God corrected many of my ideas in the process and I learned to hold on loosely to what I thought was true. Every time I thought I knew something, the Holy Spirit would show me that there was more to it than that. But God also spoke through external evidence to confirm the revelation He had given to me. During countless conversations, skeptics, Christians, and curious people brought up many questions, and God led me to write this reason journey to explore the answers to those questions. My journey is only beginning, and God has only begun to answer my questions. For whoever chooses to come along, this journey isn't about prescribing what anyone should think. The examples we'll look at on this journey aren't the focus of the journey. The journey is about a new and better way of thinking. It's about true wisdom and understanding that continues to grow over time. But what about you? Right now, you can experience peace of mind beyond what you've ever thought possible. Find out how.